Welcome to the first lecture on deadlock for Computer Science 537 Operating Systems. The learning objectives for this unit are to first explain the difference between starvation, deadlock, and live lock, and second, to be able to identify in a given situation where the system is not behaving properly, whether starvation, deadlock, or live lock exists or does not exist in a given situation. So let's first go over the various problems that can happen when concurrency and locks go wrong and understand what these different situations mean. We'll look at starvation first. Starvation really means that there's a policy that can leave some thread not executing in some situation. This means that while some threads are making progress, other threads may wait indefinitely. As an example, consider standard priority scheduling, or in the real world, waiting on standby for a flight. You may sit there waiting on standby for a flight to go, while many other passengers who have reserved seats get to fly. What this means is that some threads are making progress, or some people are making progress on planes, but other threads or people are not making progress. An example on an operating system, as we mentioned many times, is a low-priority thread waiting for resources that are constantly in use by high-priority thread. This happens in scheduling, and it can happen in the case of locks, where higher-priority threads are allowed to acquire locks while low-priority threads wait. The next one we'll look at is live lock. Live lock is a case where threads are executing and continuously doing something, but they're not making any progress. In this case, unlike starvation, all threads make no progress. In starvation, some threads were making some progress, but some threads were not. Here again, in live lock, nobody makes any progress, but the threads are doing something. They're not just sitting there waiting. Consider an example of programs that when they try to allocate, if they get an out of memory error, try again to allocate. What happens when multiple threads are trying to allocate and the sum of their allocations is greater than the amount of memory available? This means that multiple threads may continuously keep on trying to allocate memory, but none of them gets memory, and so they keep on retrying and sit there infinitely burning up CPU time trying to retry allocation when it will never work. So unlike starvation in live lock, no threads are making any progress, but all the threads are executing and trying to make progress. The third thing that can go wrong is deadlock. In deadlock, this is a policy where the threads are all stuck. They're not actually doing anything. In live lock, remember, the threads were continuously retrying, doing something like allocating memory. In deadlock, all the threads involved in a deadlock wait forever. They can never, ever recover from deadlock. Deadlock exists among a set of threads if every thread in the set is waiting for an event, either acquire release of some resource. So in the case of locks, this would mean every thread involved in a deadlock is waiting for the release of a thread. And furthermore, the most important thing is that these events they're waiting on can only be caused by another thread in the set. The problem is that other thread is also waiting, so it can never make this event happen. A classic case is when one thread waits on a lock that another lock holds, and that other lock is waiting again waiting on a lock and therefore can't release it. So consider in the real world when this can happen. A standard case of this is traffic gridlock. Gridlock can occur when cars are blocking the intersections around a block. In this case, nobody can make progress because each of the intersections that allow them to go forward is blocked by traffic trying to go in a perpendicular direction. In the real world, as I mentioned, this happens very simply with just two locks. Thread 1 is waiting to acquire resource B while has resource A locked. Thread 2 has locked resource B and is waiting for resource A. Thread 1 cannot make progress because thread 2 is holding the lock it needs, and thread 2 cannot make progress because thread 1 is holding the lock that it needs. Therefore, both threads sit there waiting forever, and they will never get out of this kind of deadlock. So the key difference between starvation and deadlock is, one, how many threads are involved. In starvation, one or more threads wait indefinitely, but other threads keep on making progress. In deadlock, all the threads involved in, star in the deadlock wait forever. There are no threads that make any progress. What this means is that deadlock, in a way, implies starvation because one or more threads wait indefinitely but starvation does not imply deadlock. In terms of ending, starvation can end. Consider the case of low priority threads or standby passenger. Eventually, if there is space on an airplane or high priority threads get their work done and going away, the low priority thread can make progress. This means that starvation is somewhat of a temporary or transient effect. Deadlock, however, cannot end without external intervention because the only threads that can break a deadlock are the ones that are actually waiting. They cannot do anything um, to break it, they cannot go away and cause it to end. This is the end of the first lecture on deadlock. Please take the first quiz before watching the next video.